The following program is presented by Chick-fil-A. Stranahan High takes on Deerfield Beach High tonight on School Duel. and welcome to School Duel, where 16 high schools from Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties battle it out in an academic tournament for South Florida bragging rights. And the winner gets to walk away with a school trophy from EDCO, championship rings from Herf Jones, $200 gift certificates from Ikea, a $1,000 check for each student, courtesy of Chick-fil-A, and so much more. With so much at stake, let's take a quick peek at the brackets for this week's game. As you see, this first round game matches Stranahan High School versus Deerfield Beach High School in what is going to be quite a showdown. The winner between the two schools will be moving on to the second round. But wait, of course there's more. During each show, each student will compete in the Chick-fil-A Challenge. Here, the student with the most correct answers throughout the show will win Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich meals for an entire year. How that sound, guys? Good. Yeah. That's right. Of course it is. <laughs> All right. But before we get started, let's go ahead and take a minute to meet this week's competitors from each school. Let's go ahead and start with the Stranahan Dragons. I like it, a lot of energy. Here we go. We have Steven Roth, a junior. Matthew Villanueva, a junior. Anna Maria Paris, a senior. And the captain of Stranahan's team is Melissa Turner. Welcome, Stranahan. <laughs> now let's meet Deerfield Beach Bucks. We have Kenan T Tugrill, right? Tugrill? Tugrill, okay, there we go. You're a junior. Well, then we have Thomas LaCava, a senior. We have Pearl Leung, a senior, and the captain of Deerfield's team is Ara Parikh, a senior. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for joining us. All right, our first round is called the warning shot. Here at School Against School, competing with toss-up questions directed at the entire group. Each question is worth 10 points, and if a question is incorrect, the other school gets one chance to steal the points. All right, schools, prepare for the warning shot. Are you ready? Good. The audience is ready. We got a great audience today. Wow. Here we go. All right. Insects. Name the body region of an insect that is farthest from its mouth. Pearl. Thorax. Incorrect. Shanahan. Abdomen. Steven. Abdomen. Abdomen is correct. Good job. Vocabulary. What term can either indicate the lower leg of a cooked chicken or a rod for beating a drum? Yes, Steven. A drumstick? Drumstick is oh. correct. Good job. Planets. Which terrestrial planet is closest to the sun? Yes, Thomas. Mercury. Correct, Mercury. You're confident about that one, huh? Good for you. Composers. Diver and Drive are anagrams for the last name of what Italian composer of operas? No one knows, it's Verdi. Moving along, spasms. What do you call a sudden, severe muscle spasm often linked to epilepsy? Thomas. A seizure. Correct, seizure or a convulsion. All right, guys, it's time for the where am I question brought to you by Spirit Airlines, the home of the $9 Fair Club. All right, contestants, you are going to be given a famous location and a clue and then asked to tell us the name of the place described. Is everyone ready? All right, I love this question. Here we go. This area contains one of the harshest climates in the world. Found in northern Africa, it is the location of the world's... Thomas. The Sahara Desert. Correct, the Sahara <laughs> Desert. I was going to say, it's the location of the world's largest hot desert. Good job. All right, Deerfield. Here we go. Moving along to sports. What winter Olympic sport combines the um, aesthetics of bowling with a scoring scheme of shuffleboard? Kenan. Ice curling. Curling, correct, very good. 
All right, data processing. What compound word refers to any data entered into a computer? Input. Input, good, all right, good job. I know you're like, I got it, I got it. Here we go, US athletes. This American was able to make history in a match against Algeria when he scored the only goal during the last minute of the game, leading the US to win their World Cup group for the first time since 1930. Thomas? Donahan. No, Stranahan. All right, the answer is Landon Donovan. I think you were kind of close. It was like a, like you merged both names. All right. <laughs> All right, angles. What is the complement of a 13 degree angle? Yes, Melissa. 86. Incorrect. Fairfield for the steal? Ara? Sorry, 167. Okay. 77 degrees is the correct answer. Oh, you guys knew that, huh? Well, did you hear the buzzer? You're, okay, because I did. And that buzzer means the end of the warning shot round. We have Deerfield Beach High leading with 50 points. Stranahan has 20, but don't worry. You guys have time to catch up. We're going to be right back with more School Duel just after these messages. In 1973, Chick-fil-A founder Truett Cathy created the Team Member Scholarship Program, encouraging Chick-fil-A restaurant employees to further their education. Changed to the Leadership Scholarship Program in 1996, Chick-fil-A has awarded over $20 million in scholarships to team members who are active in their schools and communities, demonstrate a solid work ethic, and possess strong leadership abilities, good teamwork, and a desire to succeed. Chick-fil-A is dedicated to its people and education. Chick-fil-A is the proud corporate partner of the pursuit of higher education. Have you considered taking your high school courses online? Broward County Schools offers free virtual education for middle and high school. Courses include regular, honors, and advanced placement in all subject areas. Take one course or take a full course load all online. Broward Virtual Education welcomes homeschool and private school students. For more information or to enroll, call us at 754-321-1100 or visit us online at www.bbed.net while there's still space available. Beacon TV would like to thank the following sponsors for making School Duel possible. Hi, thanks for joining us and welcome back to School Duel, our first round of action ended with Deerfield Beach leading with 50 points, but Stranahan's right behind them, only 30 points less with 20 points. But there is so much more to come as we enter round two, the joust. Now here, one player from each school competes head to head with a 10 point toss up question. The school that wins then will get three bonus questions worth five, then 10, and then finally 15 points. All right, schools, are you guys ready? All right, because it's time to joust, good. All right. Starting out, we have for Stranahan, Melissa, and then for Deerfield Beach, all right, ladies. Here's your toss-up question worth 10 points. He was referred to in the newspaper as a cowboy, hero of San Juan Hill. Later, this teddy bear became the 26th president of the... Yes, Ara. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Correct, good job. So now Deerfield Beach, you guys will get the remaining bonus questions. The following bonus questions deal with cowboys. Bonus question number one is worth five points. The activity in the spring when cowboys bring cattle from the open range to a central place for branding is called what? Yes, Ara. Herding? Correct. It's actually called Roundup. Bonus question number two, worth 10 points. In what rodeo event does the cowboy wrestle a steer to the ground by grasping its horns and twisting its head down? Yes, Thomas. Bull riding? Nope, it's actually steer wrestling or bulldogging. Bonus question number three is worth 15 points. What is a cowboy talking to when he says, get along, little doggy? Pearl? His horse. A motherless calf. Incorrect. Oi. Those were a little difficult for you, the cowboy thing. Like this Florida, huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, Pearl and Anna Maria, you guys are up next. Ladies, here are your toss-up questions. 
Oh, I like that. Oh, that's the first time I've seen that. Very nice sportsmanship. Here's your toss-up question worth 10 points. What colored name indicating an article of clothing was used during the American Revolution in reference to a British soldier? Yes, Pearl. Red. Can you be more specific? Uh, crimson. Incorrect. I'll give you the opportunity, Anna Maria, to steal that question. I'll repeat it for you. What colored name indicating an article of clothing was used during the American Revolution in reference to a British soldier? Incorrect. All right, I'll give you guys a question, another question. Um, since you guys did not get that one right, the answer is red coat. You were very close, Pearl, but I'll give you an extra question. What unusual item of clothing is worn on the heads of British barristers in courts of law? A wig? Yes, Anna Maria. A wig? A wig is correct. Stranahan, you guys have the opportunity. You may go back to be with your teammates. Stranahan, these are your questions. Are you ready? The following bonus questions all deal with clothing. Bonus question number one, worth five points. Name the knee-length skirt made of tartan wool with deep pleats worn as part of the dress for the men in the Scottish Highlands. Melissa. Kilt. Kilt, very good. Bonus question number two is worth 10 points. What Mexican garments are narrow, colorful blankets worn about the shoulders? Yes, Matthew. Poncho. Correct, also known as serapes. Bonus question number three, worth 15 points. Madras is a fine cotton cloth used in clothes. Its name is deri derived from a city in what nation? Spain. Anna, Mar Anna Maria? Spain. Incorrect. It's actually India. All right, Matthew, Thomas, come on down. It's your turn, fellas. Here's your toss-up question, gentlemen. We're at 10 points. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing prints bil billions of Federal Reserve notes annually, but it does not produce coins. That is the responsibility of what other agency named after a candy used for fresh breath? Yes, Thomas. The Mint. U.S. Mint is correct. Good job, Deerfield Beach. It's your turn. The following questions all deal with moolah, also known as money. Bonus question number one is worth five points. What motto, first briefly used in the 1860s, was restored to U.S. coins in 1908? Yes, Pearl? E pluribus unum. Incorrect. It's actually in God we trust. Bonus question number two is worth ten points. A discontinued $1 coin bore the image of what American feminist? Uh, Sacagawea. No, that was incorrect. It's actually Susan B. Anthony. Next question. Bonus question number three is worth 15 points. Coins displaying the letter S were minted in San Francisco and coins with D were minted in Denver. Coins with no letters were minted in what city? Thomas. Washington, D.C. Incorrect. That would be Philadelphia. All right, last two gentlemen. We have Stephen and Kenan. Let's go. <laughs> you guys are so nice to each other. That's so sweet. Here we go. Here's your toss-up question worth 10 points. Name the largest city in the region once known as New Amsterdam. It is now commonly referred to as the city that never sleeps. Yes, Kenan. New York City. New York City. That's right. Correct. Deerfield Beach. Here you go. The following bonus questions all deal with United States cities. Are you guys ready? Bonus question number one, of course, it's worth five points. What city in Louisiana is named after the French word meaning red staff? Thomas. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, correct, yes, Baton Rouge. Bonus question number two, worth 10 points. Name the two northern metropolitan communities which comprise the Twin Cities. Thomas. St. Louis and Chicago. Incorrect. That would be Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yes. Bonus question number three, worth 15 points. What city is indicated by this quote? Listen carefully. In 1849, during the California Gold Rush, almost overnight, a big lawless American city 3,000 miles west of Baltimore sprang up. Thomas? San Francisco? Yes, San Francisco. High five. Shh. Getting that one. There we go. All right, guys, there is that buzzer again, and that means the end to the joust. Now we have Deerfield leading with 100 points. Stranahan is behind with 45 points. Don't worry, we will be right back with more School Duel right after these messages. Win 50 bucks from School Duel and Bright Star Credit Union. 
it's easy. Go to SchoolDuel.tv, submit the correct answer to the Bright Star Question of the Week, and you're automatically entered into the drawing to win a $50 Visa gift card. You can also vote for the player of the game on SchoolDuel.tv. A new winner is announced each week based on your votes, and all votes lead to the top player of the season. Visit SchoolDuel.tv. Everyone is welcome to play and vote. Bright Star Credit Union, proud sponsor of SchoolDuel on Beacon TV. Parents and students, wake up every school day with Before the Bell, an informational show providing the 411 on what's happening that day in Broward Public Schools. The show includes lunch menus, community and school calendars, and everything else you need to know for a great day. Before the Bell can be seen every school day starting at 6.30 a.m. right here on Beacon TV. Invest in yourself. Beacon TV would like to thank the following sponsors for making School Duel possible. schools match wits to see who will be this year's school duel champion. Now this first round match has Stranahan High competing against Deerfield Beach High School. We have Deerfield Beach leading with 100 points. Stranahan has 45. Now we're ready for the rapid fire round. Here each school will pick a category. They will then try to answer 10 questions within 60 seconds from that chosen category. Each question is worth 10 points. The other school will then get a chance to steal any missed questions. Now, since Stranahan is trailing behind, we are going to give them the opportunity to pick up to pick the category. So today's topics are long live the king and God save the queen. So which category would you like, Stranahan? Long live the king. Long live the king. All right, schools, here comes rapid fire. All right, this category, Stranahan, deals with questions about kings. Remember, you do have 60 seconds to answer these questions worth 10 points. Do not wait on me to say your name. Just answer it because we want to get through it quickly. So, let's begin. George III was the king of England during what revolution? American Revolution. What state adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico was named after a French king? New Orleans. I mean, Louisiana. What title was given to ancient Egyptian rulers who were considered both kings and gods? Pharaohs. What king of England commissioned the translation of the Bible? King James. What name was shared by kings of Portugal, Tsars of Russia, kings of Yugoslavia, and an apostle? Tsar. What fifth century king of the Huns invaded the Balkans twice and marched through Gaul as far as, New as, as, far as Orleans? No, we're going to have to move on. Next, at the same time that Isabella was queen of Castile, who was king of Argon? Argon. According to legend, who was the first king of a great city on the Tiber, Tiber River? Tiber River. No one? Okay. All right. Deerfield Beach, you guys have the opportunity to now answer the questions that Stranahan Mitch missed. Okay, what name was shared by kings of Portugal, czars of Russia, kings of Yugoslavia, and an apostle? Thomas? Paul. Close, Peter. <laughs> All right, next, what fifth century king of the Huns invaded the Balkans twice and marched through Gaul as far as Orleans? Pearl? Attila. Correct, good job. And at the same time that Isabella was queen of Castile, who was king of Argon? Ara? Ferdinand? Correct. All right. Good job. Now, here are your questions. Deerfield Beach, again, remember Stranahan, you get to steal whatever questions they get wrong. Okay? Here we go. God Save the Queen. The following category contains questions about queens. Each question is worth 10 points, and then you're going to have 60 seconds to answer each question. So, here we go. Queens in Brooklyn are boroughs of what island? Manhattan Island. What form of government is headed by an emperor, queen, or king? Monarchy. In what country were there queens with the titles Tsarina? Russia. What adjective describes a period in English history between 1837 and 1901? Elizabethan. Nefertiti was queen of what country? Egypt. 
Who was the British queen when England defeated the Spanish Armada and Londoners first flocked to see the plays of Shakespeare? Queen Elizabeth I. What ancient queen died from the bite of an asp? Cleopatra. Mary II was queen of what country? England. The first visit by a British monarch to California was made in 1983 by what queen? Queen Elizabeth II. Anne Boylan was beheaded after she was convicted of what crime? Boylan, Anne Boylan. Adultery. Very good. Very good, do you feel? You got through your questions. Now, Stranahan, you get to answer the questions that they got wrong. Hopefully, you get to steal those points, okay? Queens and Brooklyn. Queens and Brooklyn are boroughs on what island? Long Island. Oh, I'm sorry, you answered too late. I'm sorry, it is Long Island, but your answer just came a little bit too late. Next question, what adjective describes the period in English history between 1837 and 1901 and is named after a queen? Vic Melissa? Victorian. Correct, Victorian. All right, good job, guys. And that buzzer right there ends the rapid fire round. We have Deerfield Beach leading with 200 points. Stranahan has 95 points. We are going to give all these scholars a short break and we'll be right back for the final showdown. In 1973, Chick-fil-A founder Truett Cathy created the Team Member Scholarship Program, encouraging Chick-fil-A restaurant employees to further their education. Changed to the Leadership Scholarship Program in 1996, Chick-fil-A has awarded over $20 million in scholarships to team members who are active in their schools and communities, demonstrate a solid work ethic, and possess strong leadership abilities, good teamwork, and a desire to succeed. Chick-fil-A is dedicated to its people and education. Chick-fil-A is the proud corporate partner of the pursuit of higher education. Are you interested in learning about TV production? Be a part of the Briar Teen News Team, South Florida's only teen-produced news show. Experience working at an actual TV station while learning on state-of-the-art digital equipment. We offer positions in everything from studio crew to school reporter. And for the more experienced students, we offer advanced credits as part of our internship program. If you're a student in Broward and you want to be a part of our team, then we've got a spot for you. For more information, go to www.browardteennews.org and click on Join Our Team. Beacon TV would like to thank the following sponsors for making School Duel possible. Hello everyone and welcome back to School Duel. We've got an interesting match going as Darefield Beach is leading with 200 points. Stranahan has 95 points, but of course, it's not over yet. It's now time for the final showdown. This is the very last round, and schools will go against each other with toss-up questions. But this time, these questions are now worth 20 points, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, if a question is incorrect, the other school can then steal the points. All right, school, it's time for the final showdown. Are you guys ready? Here we go. It's anyone's question. Water temperature. Its surface temperature can reach over 97 degrees Fahrenheit, making this ocean the warmest. Pearl? Atlantic. Incorrect. Stranahan, would you like to answer? Matthew? Pacific. No, it's actually the Indian Ocean. All right, the next question deals with muscles. What adjective describes smooth muscle tissue that is not under conscious control or that cannot be contracted at will? Melissa? Involuntary. Correct, involuntary. Age. How many decades old is a speaker of this line from an Arthur Conan Doyle story? A fine horse or a beautiful woman, I cannot look at them unmoved, even now when 70 winters have chilled my blood. Yes, Stephen. Seven. Seven is correct. Good job. Gastropods. Named for the tropical marine gastropod mollusks of the genus Strombus. They have large and brightly colored spiral shells and edible flesh. Thomas? Conks. Conks, correct, good job. Scientific apparatus, what piece of laboratory equipment removes moisture or separates mixtures according to their densities? Thomas? Centrifuge. Correct, good, I'm happy you got to say that word and not me. 
All right, Florida disasters. During the 2004 Atlantic hurricane season, four major storms struck the state, causing up to $22 billion in estimated damages. Name one of these hurricanes. Ara. Wilma. Incorrect. Janahan. Katrina. Melissa. Incorrect. Hurricane Charlie, Francis, Ivan, or Jean. Moving along. It is time now for the Who Am I question, brought to you by Huntington Learning Centers, America's tutoring providers. Now guys, in this question, you will be given up to four clues about a famous person, and then asked to tell us his or her name. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, who am I? This American recording artist, actress, and entrepreneur was born in Bay City, Michigan in 1958. According to her brother Christopher, the only thing she can cook is Ara? Madonna. Yes, Madonna. How do you know your Madonna history? Uh-oh, did you hear that buzzer? Yes? No? Okay, well, that sound brings an end to this school duel as Deerfield Beach has won with 260 points. We have Stranahan with 135 points. However, you all did an amazing job today, so congratulations to all of you for being here. And it now brings an end to the Chick-fil-A challenge, and today's winner is, drum roll please, Brrr, Thomas from Deerfield Beach. Congratulations. Good job, Thomas. Congratulations on your Chick-fil-A sandwich meals for an entire year. We want to take this time right now to thank all of our sponsors for making School Duel possible. And please, make sure that you tune in next week to School Duel, Mondays at 7 p.m. as Hylia High takes on Coral Reef High in another exciting first round match. And don't forget to visit our website at schoolduel.tv. Good night, everyone. School Duel was brought to you by Chick-fil-A.